In the earlier video, we have seen several methods that are used by scientists in order to elucidate a metabolic pathway. In this video, we continue with various other methods that are used in order to establish, identify and throw light on a particular metabolic pathway. We are going to take up an interesting uh, methodology that is called expression of a foreign gene. So expression of a foreign gene is used to study metabolic pathways. So let us create a situation where an organism has to undergo an overload of fructose. So there is an overload of fructose. So overload of fructose can come maybe from an, an IV, intravenous injection or fluid uh, fructose can be injected or it may be you know in some food uh, which we are consuming which has an uh, which has excessive amount of fructose like honey etc. So several reasons can or several ways by which there can be an overload of fructose. We need to look at if it is glucose what happens. If it is glucose so if the glucose will be converted to uh, glucose 6-phosphate then it is converted to fructose 6-phosphate then fructose 1-6-bisphosphate then it is cleaved into the two product glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and uh, uh, di dihydroxyacetone phosphate this is an enzyme called hexokinase this is an enzyme called isomerase enzyme this is an enzyme called PFK1. So keep this at the back of our mind in order to understand what happens to fructose. Let us look at what happens to fructose. When fructose is acted upon by an enzyme known as fructokinase. Now the fructokinase will introduce a phosphate group at position number one so therefore you have fructose one phosphate if the next enzyme is not pfk so this fructose one phosphate is acted upon by fructose one phosphate aldolase aldolase now fructose one phosphate aldolase will cleave fructose one phosphate now it will result into two products one will have a phosphate group, another will not have a phosphate group. So keep that there. Now what is important for us here is these two enzymes. This enzyme is a fast acting enzyme. Which means this enzyme will keep on converting fructose into fructose 1-phosphate. Whereas this is aldolase is a slow acting enzyme. It will not convert fructose 1-phosphate to its the two products in the speed, the same speed at which fructokinase is doing the conversion. Effectively, what happens? Let us take some numbers. Assume there are 100 ATP molecules which are utilized for converting fructose to fructose 1-phosphate and unless you liberate the phosphate here, unless you liberate the phosphate here this reaction cannot continue so because of a fructose overload it will have a metabolic burden on liver now how to circumvent this problem this this issue so in order to do that um, we need to produce more and more of ATP molecules more and more of ATP molecules can be produced or can be made available from phosphocreatin. So phosphocreatin, phosphocreatin that can liberate, that can help in making ATP molecules by using the ATP uh, creatin cycle. Now phosphocreatin, in order to make a phosphocreatin, this is made from ATP molecules and it is made from ATP molecules and creatine. This will happen in muscle. You need an enzyme known as creatine kinase. 
but remember this will happen in muscle whereas this reaction happens in liver so creatine kinase is not expressed in liver therefore if you want to study this metabolic flux you need to express creatine kinase this particular enzyme has to be expressed in liver so therefore cloning is done so therefore foreign genes are inserted in the liver or it is expressed in the liver of the organism that you are going to study this particular pathway especially this is being carried out in mouse so expression of a foreign gene is an important way by which uh, metabolism can be studied one of the ways by which metabolic pathways are elucidated is by using reporter genes see reporter genes in the product of this particular uh, gene can easily be detected that is the meaning of using reporter genes suppose you want to study uh, gluconeogenesis what are the important enzymes in gluconeogenesis is pepck phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase is an important regulatory enzyme in gluconeogenesis you know that gluconeogenesis if you want to study if the best organ to study that is either liver or the kidney but in order to study that one has to sacrifice an animal every now and then how to minimize sacrificing animal for the liver and kidney in order to study gluconeogenesis so scientists have developed a technique that is known as reporter genes if the problem here is we need to identify if the if the if the result arising from pep carboxykinase from blood pep carboxykinase is cannot be detected from blood so therefore you use a reporter gene what can be detected in blood is for example growth hormone so if the growth hormone can be detected from blood this is the growth hormone gene we are aware that this will have a promoter this will have a promoter let us keep the promoter a little more here this is a promoter and the growth hormone the growth hormone when it is expressed it will be released into blood take a blood sample and you will be able to determine if the level of growth hormone so now if the pep carboxykinase gene is inserted here so it is inserted here so this is our pep ck gene is inserted whenever there is a stimulation for growth hormone production you will also produce pep carboxykinase because it is under the influence of the same promoter now create a situation if the situation is carbohydrate is less carbohydrate is less when carbohydrate is less it should promote gluconeogenesis and when the diet is less in carbohydrate it will promote the gluconeogenesis and that will also result into an increased production of uh, growth hormone and it can be easily detected so effectively if the activity of pep carboxykinase can be monitored continuously without sacrificing the animal so this is the use of reporter genes in studying metabolic pathways